Welcome back to Late Night B-Twin, this is Gary. So tonight we're gonna to install some progressive monotube suspension components inside this 05 Softail. The owner is just kind of so-so on how it handles and, and how it feels. We've done a couple of different oil weights in there to, to change the ride and he just doesn't like it. So uh, more improved ride, better handling, less maintenance up front. Um, and and it's, it really is going to be a, a, a way better setup for him. I think he's going to be happy with them. Uh, we're also going to throw in a little bit of wiring because we had to remove the lights from this bike. Uh, there was some uh, butt connectors that were in there. I never liked those. Uh, they're, they're not reliable. Uh, they're, they were never sealed up. So we're going to put some douche connectors in there and we're going to do it right. Uh, I usually like to solder everything and then heat shrink it. But these things, these, these light bars and the headlight, if you ever have to service the front end, all those components have to come off. So the douche connectors just really make it nice. They're 100% waterproof. They're the actual connectors that Harley uses. So we'll go through that install as well. Let's get to it. Here's the parts that we're gonna be using for tonight. I've laid them kind of out on the bench for you guys. Uh, this is the progressive monotube setup. Uh, obviously we've got our instructions. These are the cartridges that we're going to be installing. We're going to be taking the hydraulically operated components out of the forks. And then, of course, we have our seal kit with has all the, the hardware. Some of this these components we will not be using tonight because the some of these seals that are included in the kit obviously are for a standard fork overhaul. And those are omitted, and we'll go through those in the instructions when we do it on the on the bench here. couple of things you're going to need when we start this job first off really important is a factory service manual you're going to need all this for the torque specs and how to set it up the other thing we're going to need uh, motion pro makes these really nice little tools uh, these are special sockets and they uh, they're used to remove the top of the fork components to get them out of the tree we'll use these to torque them as well a really good quality seal driver. This one's really neat. Um, obviously, when we when we install the fork tubes uh, in my my jig, you'll see that we don't have to use this feature. But you can actually um, install some seals if they're if they're required to be on the bike when you install them. This little tool has cams that that swivel around. Of course, I can't make it do it. But anyway, it locks them into place, and then you can drive the seals down onto the tubes without hurting the seals. This is made by Motion Pro as well, 41 millimeter. They are built to specific sizes, so really handy to have. I've seen guys use PVC pipe, um, sockets, things like that. Um, doesn't really work. These are actually designed to do the job. So uh, the other thing we're going to need is some calibrated torque wrenches. I've talked about this in my other prior videos as well. Uh, we're gonna need a foot-pound torque wrench, inch-pound torque wrench. We're gonna need those as well. So uh, just, a, just some simple hand tools that are involved with this. Um, something that I like to do is, um, instead of fumbling around with a service manual, I do like to write down my torque specifications on a, I just use my shop towels. I just write it down, it just makes it handy. Um, and that, as I go through everything, torque it all back together, they're just handy right in front of you and you're not getting your oily hands into your service manual and ruining it. So one inch wrench and our obviously the top socket to take the top bolt out of the retainer. And they are tight. Let me visit that. Five eight socket. We'll spin this off. Open. This is our pinch bolt. Now our Fork tube should slide out. All right, got this tool from Jim's. This is a, uh, a fork tool that, it's a jig that holds the top slider tube so that we can disassemble the fork safely. It's a non-marring surface that uses, I just use a piece of rubber inner tube, just cut a piece off, wrap it around here, and then it gets clamped in place. So this is an oil-filled gas-charged unit from Progressive. These are really great. Um, they offer way better handling than the stock setup ever did. Uh, you use a minute amount of 10-weight oil instead of the oil of your choice on how you want the front end to handle. Uh, the factory service manual will tell you how much oil each fork tube is going to have. When I disassemble these, I would normally measure the amount of oil just to make sure that it was correct at one time. Maybe it had a leak. 
So uh, it's good to document that when you're ser doing your fork services. But this requires a lot less, and we are gonna go over that in the instructions when we put this back together. Here's our twin power top socket that fits right on that. Don't have to waller it all out with a, with a crescent wrench. We bust these loose. There is tension under that. So the drain on the bottom of the fork tube, it's under about uh, 25 to 35 inch pounds, but it's a little bit tight to get off. What I normally do is I take a, just a small hammer and I'll give it a tap. And then they just pop loose real easy. With the and, and you don't have to fight it and strip the screw. There are new screws that come in the kit, so we don't have to worry about ruining this. Really nice looking oil. That's kind of what we want to see when it comes out. Uh, that tells us that um, the fork maintenance is being done on time. A lot of times you'll see the, the, the oil that usually leaves these forks is really black, a lot of metal content. That's going to tell you neglect, and it's going to tell you where. So uh, it's really great to see the oil come out nice and clear. I do expect to see some debris in here. There's a lot of moving parts in this component. So you are going to have debris and contamination in here from uh, the components as they wear. Um, I normally recommend to do this at least once a year. Obviously, you can follow your service manual, the guidelines with that. Um, they, they'll tell you for a year make and model of what you need to do. All the oil's drained out of the fork. Now we have to release the snap ring, the, the wire clip in the very top that retains the upper seal. This comes out and it's discarded. Six millimeter Allen, we're gonna remove this retaining bolt that's in the bottom of the fork. This is what retains the bottom of the, the slider. This will be discarded. We get new ones in the kit. Swing this around. And now you can gently. And now we have our lower slider. We'll get this all cleaned out. This is ready to be serviced. This is the, the seal. Obviously, this is the, the washer that the seal seats against above the inner bushing. And this is what's uh, knocked into the land right here. So this is the actual bushing that slides on your tube. And this is the lower bushing right here that slides on the bottom section of the tube. And this is what keeps it parallel with the slider as it moves up and down on the tube. This is that lower valve. We're gonna be removing this. There is a retainer that's in the very bottom of the fork. It's a little cup. We'll knock that loose, clean it up, and I'll show you because that gets reused in this process. A really long screwdriver helps as this is held in with oil with the seals and everything. So then you can push it all the way down. And this is that hydraulic valve that I'm talking about. This is the actual piston that has the orifice, the metered orifices, and this is uh, what responds to what weight oil you put in the fork as to how stiff or how soft it rides. Um, and then, of course, the springs also control uh, the damping and the, and the firmness of the fork as well. So this component here, we're gonna discard this. Actually, it'll get put into the bone pile um, if I see these damaged from time to time when there's not enough oil or people haven't done the right maintenance on them and they need to be replaced. So this will probably get passed on to somebody that needs it. Removing the bushings, we just use, I just use a little screwdriver to kind of lift up on there and use my thumb. And then I just pop up on that and then they just roll right out. Usually when I uh, service these, uh, you'll see a lot of this uh, black Teflon type material on this specific piece um, come back and it's it's really in bad shape you can see how the wear on the inside happens and then of course they're supposed to look like this when they're new so we're going to be discarding that and then at this time we can remove the upper slider bushing again uh, we want to look for wear um, this seems to be in really good shape, which tells me that the fork tube itself is healthy and will hold the seal. Here's the new one. 
so it has the Teflon on the inside and brass on the outside, the bronze. And then of course we have our spacer washer for the seal seat. And then we just will remove the seal. Now I, I do put the, install the seal from the top side. This is the bottom side of the fork. This is what's in the bottom. Um, you have to be really careful when installing these to roll them around like this when you install them on the top because you can cut or damage the sealing surface of this seal. There's also an orientation of which way it goes and we'll do that. I'll explain that uh, in assembly. We need to reuse the bottoming spring from the piston that will be installed onto the monotube cartridge. First, we're going to install this bushing. on the bottom of the slider. Then we will be installing the monotube cartridge with our bottoming spring here. The cup goes on after. We'll be installing this in the tube, like so. Install the cup up here. We will then install the slider. And obviously while holding this, I've installed some red Loctite on this the retainer bolt and drop it in with the copper washer and just run it down by hand and we will torque this. Manual uh, does say 11 to 18 foot pounds on this bolt. So we will torque this down into place. I just install a screwdriver into this hole and I'm allowed, and then it allows me to torque this. So we've torqued this to, uh, I set the torque wrench, it's, uh, the, the threshold is 11 to 18 pounds. Uh, I set it on 12 and a half, 13 pounds. We're down, remove this. We can swing this back over. We've got some 10 weight oil, calls for five ounces. I've marked it on my graduated cylinder already. Also, as I forgot to put this in, be sure to install the drain plug on the very bottom. Otherwise, your oil is going to run out. Time for some oil, five ounces. Going to slide this up a little bit. And we'll just add it into the tube. Just go nice and easy. Don't need to over, over uh, do it when you're trying to pour it in there. And I want to get about halfway on this since I've done these before. I stop pouring. I just allow this to kind of settle, the oil to settle into the bottom. So we'll remove the, the top retaining nut. And as you remember, when we took these apart, obviously, that we had the old ones on there. They give you new ones in the kit, which is really nice. Uh, this top nut that retains in the top of the fork tube already has a new seal installed. We don't have to worry about installing that. Like I said, some of the parts we're not going to reuse or use from the new uh, seal kit. And this is actually part of the top of the monotube component, so you don't have to reuse the old one that we took off. We just gotta push this down, obviously. We'll tighten it down with that socket with my ratchet. It just takes a little bit of force to push down past the spring pressure. Now we've installed that. We do have a torque value to put that to. Make sure your tools are tight. That's what's great about this fork jig. It doesn't mar the surface where the seals are at. So that's uh, really great. And then the tapered part of this really is nice. Once this is installed to install our final bushing, our ring and our fork seal. And the seals do orientate a certain way. I'll explain that. Torque spec on this top is 22 to 58 foot pounds. I put it at 40. The great thing about this jig is obviously it allows you to torque that. Now we're, we're torqued there. So we've got our upper bushing. It gets installed first. Then our divider for the bottom of the seal. Now these fork seals, as you look at them, have a deep land and a shallow land the shallow land faces up what i like to do is actually take a little bit of fork oil just a dab on your finger lightly wipe the inside of the seal 
and then roll it around the top so that it glides on. Get it to about here. Actually, we'll remove it from the tool and we'll go to the floor because I got to pound on this a little bit with our fork seal installer. Okay. Now, the nice thing about these fork installers is this. Now that we have our seal on here, I can show you how these work. You line up the, the lands and you twist the tool once it's lined up so that it's together. You can drive the, the bushing in just really lightly. You'll feel it seat like that. And then we roll this, line up the, the parting lines, remove our tool. Push our seal down in place. Just nice and neat in there like that, like so. Then we can just come over the top of the fork. You don't have to fiddle with the tool. You'll hear it firmly at the bottom. Here's our retaining ring for the seal. And then it just glides right over the top. And then there's a land inside here that this retaining ring will snap down into. I just use a little screwdriver to just make sure it's it's seated in there. Um, if the seal's driven all the way down and the bushing's all the way down, you won't have a problem getting this clip in and out. So uh, this fork tube is ready for service and to be installed back on the motorcycle. So our fork is ready to install. Notice that you have these flats on the top. Not only is that used for torquing, but we also need to make sure that that flat lines up on the inside of this hole so that you don't bottom out the bolt that holds the windshield on here. So I'm gonna slide this back up, the assembled uh, um, fork in here, give it a little twist and it will go right up into place into the, into the cowbell. We're gonna line up that flat there, make sure that this is seated all the way to the top. And this lower pinch bolt, I did put a dab of red Loctite on it. This uh, spec goes from 30 to 35 foot pounds. What did you set it at? I set it at 35. This is a critical fastener. So I like to run it at the higher end of the torque spec. I've got my adapter in here. Obviously it goes from half inch to three eighths. We're gonna go down to 55 foot pounds. And we're torqued. Something to uh, really pay attention to. There is a correct way and an incorrect way to install this. And it always says out on the factory chrome or aluminum finished components. If you have like a chrome exchange that you get these through, a lot of times these are sanded or buffed off. So just remember how you take this off. It's really important how it goes back to hold the wheel spacer. But just remember that the tapered part of this clamp faces in here. So we have the lower cap on, the axle gets bottomed out on this side, and then what I like to do is I just like to hand tighten these. They will be torqued, they have a torque value. The axle nut is a three quarter uh, nut, and it receives 60 to 65 foot pounds of torque. I've retained that on that side. That's torqued, and then I go back. We're going to torque the axle cap nuts. They go down from 132 to 180 inch pounds. I'm going to go to 150 inch pounds. And you like to do them just real even, just to make sure that it goes down square. And now our axle's installed. Oh, by the way, um, I would like to uh, thank Max and Brian. They did an amazing job on this paint uh, for my customer. Um, this was a um, kind of a fiasco story with this motorcycle that had been wrecked and a couple of different shops had their hands in it and they stole parts and wrecked parts and pilfered it and uh, we just really turned this into a great masterpiece for him. This bike was the very first video here at Late Night V-Twin where we did the uh, Oil Bud oil cooler. 
Um, he's really enjoying that. Um, the bike runs really cool. Um, I, no issues. Of course, we haven't gotten into the heat of summer here in Northern California, but um, that's right around the corner, and I'm sure he's going to be pleased with that as well. Uh, I do like to drop a little bit of Loctite, blue Loctite, on these nuts. All right, our fender's installed. Now we can get this brake caliper in here. I like to run a little blue Loctite on these. These are our brake caliper mounting bolts. Caliper mounting bolts are 28 to 38 foot-pounds. I've got it set at 30. Here at Late Night V-Twin, I don't like doing anything half-ass. And I saw something when we took the, when we broke the bike down to get this all ready for the shooting this video. And I wanna just bring it to everybody's attention that there are right ways to do this and wrong ways to do things. And one of this that really stuck out to me is the wiring for the headlight and the passing lamp turn signals. If you notice, they've got butt splices in the wiring harness here. They're not even heat shrunk. Um, I don't really like this setup. Also, it's not removable and it's got a ton of wire that doesn't need to be in there. It was all bundled up in a zip tie. So I'd like to talk about uh, the Dutch connectors. Um, they are specific style of connectors. They take a certain type of tool to take them apart and crimp. Um, but this is basically what they look like. This is what uh, Harley uses. Uh, actually, it's a, a pretty industry-wide uh, standard connector. They've got silicone seals on them. They do not leak. They are very positive. Um, they are rebuildable and serviceable. And um, obviously, here's the pins. There's a socket and a pin. And there's also a unique tool that actually crimps the, the pins as they go in. And you actually can set the depth and the amount of crimp on these depending on the wire size. Uh, this is a really expensive tool. These are really expensive connectors, but it's the right way to do this. I want reliability out of this motorcycle and I don't need electrical problems with it. So we're gonna correct this while we're in here. So I'm gonna throw this into the video as well. Something that I found very useful, my wife quilt, and um, she has what's called a seam ripper. And she bought me this really cool handmade one. We wanna peel back some of this vinyl and these seam rippers just work great for this because you can go in here and you can slice that. And then we can peel back the wiring so we have the room to do the connections with. So that gives us a nice amount of wire to get in on our crimps. We're gonna get rid of these. I'm gonna do one side at a time and we're gonna label the connectors. So I know that this is the left lamp. So we'll come in here and we'll clip those. We'll clip this back right up here next to the connector. So we leave ourselves a fair amount of wire. We'll strip, strip these out. This, this wiring harness was way too long. It doesn't need to be there. It was all bundled up in a zip tie. And it just gets tangled up underneath the triple tree. So we're just going to leave a fair amount of wire that we can service this with. I think this will probably be good. Get rid of that. So these are prepped. Now, here's the great part about this tool. You can see the jaws, how they evenly clamp the fastener there. Nice, even crimp. You do need to uh, make sure that you use the same type. So we're gonna use the pin on one side and the socket on the other. And I'm gonna reverse these so that you know you can't confuse left to right. I'm just gonna turn them around and I'll show you that. So this little pin drops in the hole. I've already adjusted the depth for the crimp of where the crimp needs to be. You set the tool to hold it into place. We'll twist the wires up a little bit just to get them nice and tight. We install the pins first. This goes into the, like so. Push it all the way down and then you just squeeze. Presto. So we have all pins on this side. We're gonna put the sockets on this side and I'll show you how the connectors correspond. You do need to realize that when you put these into the tool, the side with the hole is what's being crimped. 
And this is obviously the part that's in the connector that's making contact on the pin. And then there's this little teeny land right there. You can kind of see me, my fingernail catch it. That's what's actually going to bottom out in the connector and clip in there. And I'll show you how those go together next. Long end goes into the bottom and gets in there. Hold it into place. The douche connectors. The shielded end or the female part takes the pins. The male part of the connector, this would be the male, obviously this is the female, takes the sockets, they're opposite. And then it has these retainers that we put in there once the pins are installed and clicked into place. So what I like to do is I have a little pick tool. We need to pick the little silicone grommet out and we need to install that grommet on the end and that doesn't have to be in any particular order. These are numbered so that if you are custom building a wiring harness or if you are actually going into the Harley-Davidson um, wiring diagrams, they're going to tell you the connector number and the cavity number. These are actually cavity numbers. But anyway, um, enough about that. That's just technical. I like it. Kibosh. I just stick them in here because we're going to match the colors up on the corresponding connector once this is kind of pushed down and out of the way, because we need to pop these into the connector itself. This is the back seal of the connector. So it's gonna look something like this after you get it put together. Now, these being the female pins, they go into the male connector and you just slide them into the corresponding holes. Just pick one, install it and you'll hear it click. There it goes. Okay, so now you can just kind of wiggle this to its, it, it's in place. And then I just take my little tool and I just gently slide the silicone down onto the wires into the back of the connector. Okay, so we've got our silicone seal in the bottom of this. You can see how it grips around the wires. Uh, and then it has this retainer you can see the clips inside of here that you re you release with a small screwdriver or a special tool they have for these. And that one has to go all the way up. Make sure that the, the sockets are all the way to the top of flush. And this is the lock that goes in place, snap it into place, and that's there forever until you take it apart and service it. These are reusable connectors. These are available for, uh, through JP Cycles. I do happen to buy them from a, an electric uh, specialty house. Um, I get them on a discount on them, uh, way better than uh, what you're gonna find at JP Cycles. But if you only need one or two of these, you don't use them on an industrial scale like I do. Um, because I buy in large quantities, I get a better deal. But uh, when you need these, they're really nice to have. The tool is very expensive. I think it's three or $400. Um, for the tool, but uh, it's very handy to have if you're doing this type of work. We need to make sure that we align which wire goes where, and that's important on this before I install that. This is something I was thinking about here. So you can see that we've got the top of the lock tab here, and it's black, blue, and purple. So we're going to correspond that on the connector. So a lot of times what I like to do is just orient this and know that my first cavity is going to be black and then blue. So black goes in here. Black will be the top corner. Then blue. And if you make a mistake, these connectors are easy to service. And purple. Just slide that down out of your way so you can get the pins located in there. Okay, so we know that the connector needs to be orientated like this. So we've got black on this top corner here where my thumb is. And that's how we're gonna orientate our pins when they go in. So we've got black, blue, and purple on the bottom. These just slide in, and like I said, they'll get an audible click. Pop the blue in in the corresponding hole. So you can hear that clicking, and then you just slide the silicone seal home. Then we have we have to make sure that these are are uh, 
in their seats, which they are. You can kind of see the clips down in here that you can pull with a tool that locks that, that pin in place. Then we grab this little guy and this the, the wedge part goes down. It's got a little pair of needle nose here and you just orientate this in here like that and snap it into place. Now, these two connectors will then, as you install this one, I'll just use this as an example, you've got a silicone seal on both ends and then you've got a silicone seal that goes together like that. And then it's 100% waterproof. They're serviceable, rebuildable. They're really great little pieces. Um, you, like I said, you will spend a fortune buying them individually, but and the tool and the pins. But it's great because if I ever have to service these, I can reuse this part of the connector, just cut the pins out, discard them if we had damaged wiring, and then reinstall it. All right, so we got all this all put together. The great thing about this is, is that when my customer came in, he had some real awful handling characteristics of the bike. We had already upgraded the rear suspension to the progressive shocks in this bike. Uh, he really uh, likes the performance level of the those components. So it made sense to, when we overhauled this front end to cure the sponginess, uh, the leaks in the seals, the components that were shot inside. We did the monotube cartridge setups from progressive. Uh, they matched the level of performance with along with the rears so the bike's going to handle fantastic uh, i think he's going to have a lifetime of uh, great service uh, with these components we're not going to see the wear characteristics yeah we're still going to have to check the sliders every once in a while um, we're going to have to monitor that oil level that we put in there those five ounces that still needs to be serviced those are something that you need to take care of regardless of what components you have in these forks maintenance is really important. I always say, if you think maintenance is expensive, what do you think about neglect? So um, anyway, after breaking all this down, um, we did find that the lower sliders were pretty shot. Uh, we replaced those with brand new Harley components. We added in those uh, progressive monotube cartridges. Um, and then the real great bonus about this is that I didn't like any of the wiring that was in the, the, the headlight bucket and the turn signals and the passing lamps. So I got to throw in a little bit of bonus footage to actually see how those douche connectors work and, and the benefit of those. Yeah, they are expensive, but buy once, cry once. That's my opinion. Um, I really do uh, wanna say that I, I can't stress this enough. Um, I do recommend a lot of uh, high grade components in these videos that I'm making for you. Um, you know, you've seen my videos with the M8s, S and S, fueling, um, progressive, uh, legend suspensions, those types of parts. But they're top shelf parts. They're highly engineered, precision made components. They're gonna work on your motorcycle and they're gonna give you a lifetime of service. You're not gonna have any issues with them. Um, we wanna turn that Harley um, back into that great legend that it needs to be and it deserves to be. If you guys have any questions about this video, uh, please uh, hit me with a, with a question, a comment. Um, I uh, wanna thank everybody for subscribing. Uh, the response to these videos has just been overwhelming. It's been really great to help you guys out. I hope you enjoy the videos, and I really look forward to hearing from you. Whether you want to be a hater or you want to be a liker and a subscriber, hit that button, and I'll respond to you. Thanks for coming back to Late Night V-Twin.